Have you ever thought about using Google Expeditions VR biomes to teach your students about the biomes of the world? Let me show you how I use different resources along with Google Expeditions biomes to teach my students about all of the plants, animals, amounts of precipitation, amounts of sunlight, temperatures, and adaptations that organisms need to survive in these biomes around the world. Using an introductory video like this by Frank Gregorio on YouTube is a great way to grab your students' attention about biomes at the beginning of the unit. To put your students all on a level playing field, I recommend finding some sort of great resource like Moo Moo Math and Science. In this particular video on biomes of the world, it takes you through each one of the biomes and gives you a breakdown of great information like the temperature, the amount of precipitation, some of the organisms that live there, but it gives the kids a visual before they actually have to research these things on their own. And then it makes them feel like they can do the project and they can be successful while they're going and having to research later on by themselves. So this is a great introductory activity um, after you've introduced it with something special like the Gregorio video that I just showed you a minute ago. While the students view the video, they can fill in a worksheet that looks kind of like this. Um, I just made this super fast so that my students can record any kinds of temperature that they might find, locations for the different biomes around the world, amounts of precipitation. Um, they could record any information about any plants or animals that they might find um, in the video, and they can use all of this information later on in their research project. This is the Google Expeditions uh, VR Biomes lesson that's available in Google Expeditions. Um, while doing this lesson, the students have their Google form open and students are going to record what they find in each scene. Um, I wanted them to be able to go to each location and look at the animals, plants, and amounts of sunlight if that was available, amounts of precipitation, and any adaptations that were mentioned in the expedition. This is a great way for students to build more background knowledge before they start on their project over biomes. It's found near the equator. So that's like the center part of the earth. So this place gets lots and lots and lots of sunlight, which is one of our resources, right? One of our abiotic factors. Did I mention it's super rainy? Yes. Okay, yes. remember this one has very, very high biodiversity, lots and lots of different kinds of plants and animals. I would type that up. Lots and lots of different kinds of plants and animals. Competition for nutrients and space is fierce. So things are constantly competing to be able to survive here. Not only between animal species, but between plant species as well. I'm sure you could already think of some organisms that probably live in this place because you probably know what it is, but we're not saying what it is yet. Okay, so think monkeys, gorillas, snakes. <clears throat> you only have to pick two to type up on your Google form. Frogs, jaguars, lizards. Pick any ones you like, iguana, anteaters. Sloths. Sloths are cute. I think they are. 
Okay, adaptations for organisms that live in this particular biome would be a lot of them live in the trees, right? A lot of them like to climb. A lot of them can camouflage well, like they can hide in with their surroundings, right? And a lot of the organisms in this place are nocturnal. That means that they're going to come out at night. One thing I want you to notice before we move on to the next biome, after you tell me what this is in a second, look up at the canopy. I always think about George, uh, George of the Jungle swimming on a, uh, swinging on a vine, <laughs> going through. Do we know who George of the Jungle is? Okay. So that's the canopy. So does somebody know what the name of this one is? This biome, raise your hand, don't blurt it out. Yes? Tropical rainforest. Right now, type up tropical rainforest if you don't have the answer yet. At the start of the biomes research project, students are responsible for coloring in the different biomes of the world on a biome coloring map. There are lots of biome coloring maps available online. This is worth 20 points of their test grade. The other 80 points comes from their actual research that they do over the specific biomes. As a review of what you've covered with the Gregorio video and the Moo Moo Math video where the students start to research the different biomes. On the next day in class, you can go ahead and have them watch an introductory video where they're just practicing listing the names of the major biomes. And then the students can actually start on their project of exploring the different biomes and making sure that they have all of this information. They can use their notes that they gained from going on the, vir the virtual reality expedition. Um, they can also use the notes that they got from the first Moo Moo Math video. But this is just a blank uh, template that I made as a Google Doc that I st stick in Google Classroom for my students. Um, I do have an interactive game that they play, which is amazing. It's called Switch Sue. And then as they go through and they play this game, then students are learning about the things that are actually in the chart that they're filling out for their biome project. So the kids can click play and then they go through and just to give you an example, um, you would go through and you figure out where the tropical rainforest is. You get to build it by adding the kinds of plants you would see. The kids can use this in their project. Um, you put in the kinds of animals. This gives kids ideas of animals that they can include in their project. Um, you would do amounts of precipitation that they would include in their project. And here's the amounts of precipitation. Um, the students would uh, pick a temperature range and then they have this temperature to record in their project. And then they move on to the next biome. Now, if some of the biomes do not include the temperature or the amounts of precipitation, then I've also included this website right here to help them record more information. You can see that when you click on rainforest, it does give them information. This is all available in the lesson plan that I've provided. Um, I also have another really great website called MBGNet where the students can actually figure out about adaptations as well. Um, you may have to provide your students with additional resources for adaptations, but this is an amazing place for them to start with adaptations, uh, specifically for the first biome that I gave you. Um, and then the kids can fill in the rest of their biome chart. This is an example of what one looks like that's been filled in. And you can see that the temperature has been recorded, the amounts of precipitation, um, adaptations, organisms that are found. So the kids, they really enjoy picking out different animals and plants and then this becomes a, a great learning tool for the students and it's obviously checking for understanding and mastery of each one of the biomes. If your students complete all of these amazing activities from this lesson, then they should be biome experts. These activities are available on TES 
and you can also search for other activities that I've created for Google Expeditions VR and AR also on TES. I hope you guys have a fabulous time adventuring through the different biomes of the world.